When I was in my late teens and early 20s, I worked as a chef. I worked in various hotels and restaurants. In all of them, there was always a large stove. At the start of each day, it was someone's duty to ignite the pilot light on the stove and ovens. Then, whenever the kitchen got busy, all the chefs had to do was to turn a knob and release the gas and the whole stove ring would come to life. Our baptism is a bit like that pilot light. It's always there and always on, but we can very easily leave it burning without ever getting it fired up. Unless that knob is turned to on, the stove remains dormant and pretty useless. On the big kitchen stove, a steady stream of gas fuels the little pilot light. But if the stove knob is turned to on, a great rush of that same fuel ignites the whole stove. It comes to life and proves itself fit for the purpose for which it was made. In the present age of the church, we can see that the church is overflowing with relatively dormant baptized Christians. Our spiritual pilot light is ignited on the day of our baptism, and to have that pilot light burning is absolutely essential. But the Lord has bigger plans than that. He wishes us to be all aflame. He himself says in the Gospels, I have come to cast fire on the earth and how I wish it were already burning. But how do we do that? What spiritual knob must we turn to the on position? Or what soul button must we press so that our faith life, our life in Christ, may burst into a mighty flame? Well, there are many things that we can do and should do. These things include cultivating a prayer life, reading and meditating on the Word of God, frequenting the sacraments, especially Mass and confessions. But there are people who do these things who are still not all aflame with the love of God. It is unfortunately possible for us to do all these things in a superficial, almost mechanical way. So it is important that we realize that we need to ask the Holy Spirit to stir us up. Perhaps that is the one thing that we can neglect to do in our spiritual life. We neglect to ask the Holy Spirit, who is the foundation of any spiritual life, we neglect to ask him to really come alive in us and have his way so that our lives and we ourselves look more like Christ. We have the sacrament of confirmation for that, some might say, and that is true. But if we are honest about the present state of the church, we know that all too often that sacrament is received and given with a little interior desire and even less expectation that it will make one blind bit of difference to how the young person who will receive it lives his or her life. It is to be hoped, however, that as we become more convinced and dedicated in our faith and desiring to know Christ and to live the Christian life, we have need of asking the Holy Spirit we received in baptism and in confirmation to have his way in us and to establish his full dominion in us, the full dominion of Christ Jesus. An American bishop, Daniel Jenke, a few years back, said the following, the days in which we live now require heroic Catholicism, not casual Catholicism. We can no longer be Catholics by accident, but instead be Catholics by conviction. In our own families, in our parishes, where we live and where we work, like the very first apostolic generation, we must be bold witnesses to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. 
But to be those bold witnesses, those convinced and convincing Catholics, what we need is a mighty movement of the Holy Spirit. We will need a new personal Pentecost that stirs up the grace and gifts of the previous sacramental Pentecost we received at our confirmation. Some, like those in the charismatic renewal movement, would call that the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some will call it a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit or a renewed infilling of the Holy Spirit. Whatever it might be called, we have need of some sort of new or second Pentecost, similar to the second outpouring of the Spirit the disciples received after the first wave of persecution, which we hear of in today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. Peter and John had been arrested, threatened, and warned not to preach about Jesus again. And their response, along with the whole church, was to ask the Holy Spirit to give them even greater boldness and the necessary power and courage to do the work of spreading the message of faith in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit filled them up again as he did at Pentecost, and they continued to witness to the Lord by word and even by mighty deeds. Whatever name we might give it, it is clear that in our day and age we have need of some of that holy boldness from the Holy Spirit, a movement of grace that will ignite the pilot light of faith which burns in the hearts of all believers. And so we should be daily asking the Lord, the Holy Spirit, that we would become more than just Christian in name or by habit or by accident of birth, asking the Holy Spirit that he would stir in us the desire and the ability to be Catholics by conviction. Lord, grant to us that holy boldness in the Holy Spirit that we may live fully aflame for your glory.